السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسرين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We continue inshallah ta'ala with uh, the book of Qiyam uh, al by Imam al-Ajuri rahimahullah الحث على قيام الليل والترغيب فيه to uh, have all means of encouragement to do this act of worship that's one of the most virtuous acts of worship that by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make it an obligation upon the believers but it's in the category of the recommended acts and it's recommended that means we need to take all the means to have a share in it and not to deprive ourselves from uh, this great ibadah which is the ways of the righteous ones as the prophet والسلام, said before and it's a ibadah that you would not like you would not find this the like of it as far as the rewards and and the ayat of the quran that talks about it in so many places in the quran and a hadith of the prophet والسلام, it's a ibadah that the prophet والسلام, would never miss whether he is traveling or not so it's something that we should have Uh, a part of this in our life and we always exert ourselves and, uh, and try to do more and more of uh, this ibadah and to be consistent in doing it. Uh, we stopped that uh, hadith uh, of the Prophet والسلام, that Imam Al-Ajuri rahimahullah mentioned about uh, a man waking up his wife and a wife waking up her husband for Qiyamul Layl. as part of helping one another matters of goodness and righteousness. Uh, so continuing with the same uh, or the like of this hadith in a different narration, where he says, وَحَدَّثَنَا إِبْرَهِيمُ بْنُ مُوسَى الْجَوْزِي قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا الْعَبَّاسُ بْنُ مُحَمَّدْ الدُّورِي قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا عُبَيْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ مُوسَى قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا شَيْبَانُ بْنُ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنَ عَنِ الْأَعْمَشْ عَنْ عَلِي بْنِ الْأَقْمَرْ عَنِ الْأَغَرْ أَبِي مُسْلِمْ عَنْ أَبِي سعيد الخدري. رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسد الدماسنج صلى الله عليه وسلم سد من استيقظ من الليل وأيقظ أهله فصليا ركعتين جميعا كتب من الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات من استيقظ over wakes up من الليل from the night that means he was sleeping and he woke up وأيقظ أهله and he woke his family up And al-ahl refers to the family in large and refers specifically to the wife. فَصَلَّيَا رَكْعَتَيْنِ So, فَصَلَّيَا here in the dual tense, which explains what ahlahu means. That means his wife. فَصَلَّيَا So both of them, they prayed ركعتين two rak'ah. Only two rak'ah. جميعاً they prayed it together. That means in jama'ah. كُتِبَ مِنَ الذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرًا They will be both written Among those who make remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kathiran, a lot, men and women, which is uh, mentioned in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the, the Muslims uh, or the believers, one of their characteristics is that they make frequent dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Like, for example, in Surah Al-Ahzab, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the, uh, the different characteristics of the believers and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them, forgiveness and a great reward in the Muslimin and Muslimat and Mu'minin and Mu'minat and Qanitin and Qanitati and Sadiqin and Sadiqat and Sabirin and Sabirat and Khashi'in and Khashi'at and Mutasaddiqin and Mutasaddiqat and Sa'imin and Sa'imat and Hafizin and Furujahum and Hafizat والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات uh, These characteristics the Muslims and Muslimin and Muslimat both men and women are mentioned Muslim men and Muslim women believing men believing women القانتي the devoted ones in ibadah men and the devotees of the women والصادقين and the truthful ones among the men and the truthful ones among the women والصابرين والصابرات the patient uh, ones from the men and the patient women والخاشعين والخاشعات and the, those who have خشوع from men and the خاشعات women والمتصدقين and those who give charity men والمتصدقات women والصائمين those who fast men والصائمات women والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات and those who guard their 
chastity and the private parts, men, walhafidat, women. وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And those who make remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كَثِيرًا And this is the only characteristic that says كَثِيرًا They don't do it once in a while. They make dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ And the, also the females. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them مَغْفِرًا Forgiveness and a great rewards. When we look at the ayah and we see this hadith, right? When you, when you, when you are sincere and you want to apply all of these characteristics, because you seek this great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is goodness in this life if we, if this is not our concern in this life is to be upon these great characteristics. Uh, but then when you look at the subject of a dhikr, it requires lots of dhikr. And what constitutes kathiran, linguistically, and also as the ulama they say, is that means this is, uh, when, when, you, when you say, for example, there's a, a, a cup of water, there's, this cup has lots of water in it. It's not going to be less than half of the of the container. It's going to be more than that. Most of the cup has water in it. So the word kathiran refers to what's uh, the most of uh, what is mentioned here is for the for the person is constitutes this characteristic. So who is the one that makes lots of dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa taala? Is the one that is most of his time is occupied in dhikr. That's what kathiran means. So how to achieve this? Because it's not just any dhikr. So when it's when the subject is mentioned is that you make dhikr day and night to the best of your ability to say the athkar that the Prophet ﷺ used to say in different situations, in different times, in different places. But this hadith is a great blessings and a ni'mah from Allah. So it makes it so easy if you want to be among those who are at dhakirin Allah kathiran wa dhakirat. Uh, try to apply this easy action. Waking up at night, waking up one's wife, a wife waking up her husband, as the previous hadith talks about, if they refuse, you sprinkle water on them. To pray both of you together, the salah, jami'an, together, it will be written that you are from the dhakirin Allah kathiran. Not just those who remembered Allah, but those who frequently and they make lots of dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, men and women. So such a great reward. And the hadith is authentic, authentic hadith, quoted by Abu Dawood and others. So this is a beautiful hadith that we should have a share in our lives and our days. And if it's then done on a daily basis, mashallah, this is great. But always to have such a thing applied in our life. And as we said, the effect of that in relationships and, and things in our households and what we... Many people complain of what's happening in their homes and things like this is because of the shayateen are present and the shayateen they run away when there's dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the ways to achieve that is, is to apply this hadith. The next hadith, he says, وَأَخْبَرَنَا حَامِدْ إِبْنِ شُعَيْبْ الْبَلْخِي قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا أَبُوْ عُمَرْ الْمُكْرِي قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا سُنَيْدْ إِبْنِ دَوُدْ عَنْ يُوسُفْ إِبْنِ مُحَمَّدْ ابن المنكدر عن أبيه عن جابر بن عبد الله قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جابر بن عبد الله said that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said قالت أم سليمان ابن داود the mother of سليمان ابن داود prophet سليمان she said يا بني oh my son لا تكثر لا تكثر النوم بالليل oh my son do not sleep a lot during the night فإن كثرة النوم بالليل يترك الرجل فقيرا يوم القيامة يترك الرجل فقيرا يوم القيامة because indeed uh, lots of sleeping during the night uh, leaves the man poor in the day of al qiyamah leaves the man poor in the day of al qiyamah the hadith as far as the hadith is concerned is weak the ulama of the hadith they said the hadith is weak uh, because of the uh, some of the names in the chain of narrations, uh, and uh, they are weak, uh, like for example Ibn Munkadir here and and others. So, as far as the hadith is concerned, but and as we said before, someone like Imam Al Ajuri or others, they would bring a hadith like this with the chain of narrations. So they, you know, they they did their part in which they would mention the chain of narrations there. And maybe there, uh, another narration would come up to other people that is authentic. 
but also the meaning of it is something that goes within the other meanings of the hadith that shows the virtue of such a good deed. Um, because again, it's not a, a sinful thing to not to pray at night. But when you see such a, a great reward that nobody can really comprehend, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Qiyamul Layl in Surah Al-Sajda, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُمْ No soul knows what has been hidden for it from the comfort and the jewel of its eyes as a result, as a recompense of what they used to do. This was mentioned with regards to Qiyamul Layl, the night prayer. So when the reward is something that nobody can even comprehend in this life, how great the reward is, you would consider that if someone misses this, when he has the ability to do it, that he would come on the Day of Judgment very poor. And people in this life, they consider that in their businesses, right? You might have a business and you you have your ends meet and everything like this, but you would miss a great opportunity to make a fortune and to change your entire life completely by missing uh, a deal, for example. You would consider that a great loss, even though you didn't lose physically in your business, but you lost a great opportunity to completely transfer your life. So it comes from the same concept here. You know, the believers, the more they elevate themselves in al-Iman, the more they perfect their Iman, their loss is not just in, in, in sins, right? Their loss becomes in losing, in, in, in not doing some of the recommended and the optional acts and the sunnah acts that the Prophet ﷺ used to do when we have the ability to do it. This is a loss. Uh, and that's why we one of the means to get us encouraged to do the night prayer is to um, to see how how this life is very short and how the Quran affects us. And when we're talking about Surah Al-Ma'arij again, Fasbir Sabar and Jamilan, have a beautiful patience because what's coming ahead is 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 a day that its length is fifty thousand years long, and people will stand in the day of Al Qiyamah uh, in basically thousands of years. So why is it so difficult to stand up in salah at night for minutes or hours or so? And again here, as, as we heard the previous hadith, turaka. So it's really, uh, I don't want to say it in a way that we, um, uh, sometimes people take things out of context or make what is mustahab as fard. No, it's not fard. But it doesn't mean that it's not fard that we leave it. All right? We should make sure that we we do it and we do it the best we can. Uh, the next narration, uh, which is uh, the last one before uh, some of the statements of Imam Ajuri, rahimahullah, he said, "Hadathana Abu Sa'id al-Mufaddal ibn Muhammad al-Janadi fi al-Masjid al-Haram." That means he, masjid, he mentioned that in al-Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. He, uh, he used to have a halqa, uh, a lecture in the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. And he is someone that died in the year 308 after the Hijrah. So, uh, you know, around more than 1100 years ago. So he, he said that to the people in the Masjid Haram in Mecca. He said, حدثنا صمت بن معاذ قال قرأنا على أبي قرة موسى بن طارق He said, the narrator said that we recited, we read this on Abi قرة موسى بن طارق Um قال ذكر زمعة ابن صالح he mentioned زمعة ابن صالح عن زياد ابن سعد عن أبان ابن أبي عياش عن أنس ابن مالك that أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه said قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن العبد إذا صلى حد يدركه النعاس وهو ساجد فإن الله عز وجل يباهي به الملائكة يقول انظروا إلى عبدي نفسه عندي وجسده في طاعتي which means that if the slave of Allah if a Muslim, if a believer if he prays till he is يدركه النعاس till النعاس is to uh, feel asleep or to be sleepy uh, while he's in sujood he becomes sleepy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يباهي به الملائكة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to the angels in a way that he's so proud of his slave he said, Unzuru ila abdi. Look at my slave. Nafsuhu indi. His nafs is with me. This is what, ha what happens when a person sleeps. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the souls when it, when it sleeps. Wa jasadu fi ta'ati and his body is in my obedience. 
right? Uh, this hadith, this hadith is weak, and we know that it, in the in the authentic hadith, the Prophet alayhi salatu was saying, "Hadith in Sahih Muslim and others." He said, "إذا نعس أحدكم في صلاته فلينصرف وليرقد." If one of you uh, نعس that becomes very sleepy in his salah, let him quit the salah and let him sleep. Don't uh, struggle with yourself if you're sleepy. Because there's another hadith, otherwise you might be making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and instead you make dua against yourself. So the sunnah is when you when you find yourself very sleepy, then go to sleep. If, say for example, you're making a long salah and you start being sleepy in the salah. Finish the salah, do not cut it and leave of course, finish it but don't make it long and then it's better that you sleep but with the, with the condition that you you don't miss the option or the obligatory salah. The, the point here is, uh, the the hadith it it says that this is a person slept in his sujood, so how can that be a, a virtuous thing? First of all, the hadith is weak. Okay, so the hadith is weak. But when it comes to the meanings of uh, of why the Imam al for example, brought it in here, it might happen to a person without the intentional, without knowing that this is going to happen to him. Right? It's not someone that okay, let me pray to rakah and make myself fall asleep while in sujood. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is proud of me. No, someone it happened that he was making salah and he overslept. When you look at it from a distance, right, this is a person that is exerting himself so much. And the ulama talked about the issue of sleeping while in sujood, does it break the salah or not and things like that. But the point here is that the sunnah is that you sleep and you don't continue the salah in such a way. But if that happens, uh, it shows that that person is is taking himself away from what he desires to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to sacrifice in his ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most rich. He doesn't want from, from us to punish ourselves or to torture ourselves. So again, the hadith is weak. But then after that, he said, قال محمد بن الحسين, he said, فيما ذكرته واختصرته بلاغ لمن منع نفسه لذة النوم فآثر القيام. What I mentioned and I made it summarized it because the hadith and the text are so many when it comes to the virtue of the night prayer. بلاغ بلاغ that means it conveys you, takes you, takes you to a, a place, take you. And al بلاغ is when you take in some provisions or take in some means to reach a destination. So what he mentioned of these texts and these revelations and things like this, this is something that would be sufficient for you. To take you to that level, uh, for those who would with, withhold themselves from sl- from the from the joy of sleep, فَآثَرْ الْقِيَامِ he makes ithar he chooses al qiyam the night prayer over his desire to sleep. وَرَاوَحَ بَيْنَ الْأَقْدَامِ and he would take rest in his standing. You would lean on your right uh, foot sometimes, and to the left foot that means you're getting tired while standing and this is also a form of mujahada you struggle a little bit not too much don't don't torture yourself but it's okay to to feel uh, you know a little bit tired but not into an extreme way and it's okay to do that in the ibadah but not to be away or 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 more than what the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and and again especially that if a person knows himself so that he does not quit the ibadah whatsoever and if someone doesn't make this ibadah whatsoever, it, it sounds difficult. And why would a person do such a thing and this and this and that? But when a person put himself into the ibadah and take himself in a gradual way, uh, you would see without having to say it early on. It Things happen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften the hearts. And a person, you know, this becomes his joy. And he would enjoy. This is where they used to find their delight and joy in reciting the Quran. As he says, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, فَلَوْ يَا أَخِي فِي اللَّيْلِ المظلم. And if, if you witness him, O oh my brother, in this dark night, فَقَلْبُهُ لِمَا يَتْلُو مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ متدبر. Listen to what he says. He says, that person that you know, making the night prayer and he's enjoying the recitation of the Quran and putting the effort physically to make the salah. You would look at that person and his heart, of course, nobody knows what's in the heart except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's just explaining these virtue. That the heart for what he's reciting, mutadabbir, reflecting upon what is being recited. 
وبأمثاله معتبر and by the examples and the similarities or the parables that the Quran sets he's معتبر he's take, it's taken him to the level where he learns from it and get affected by it وفيما حكي متفكر and what's been narrated in the Quran he is thinking the stories and things like this not just reciting so that he can get some rewards he's interacting with the Quran while reciting it وبالوعد والوعيد لنفسه مذكر and by the promise of Allah and the the warnings of the punishment of Allah to himself that person is مذكر he is being reminded when you read when you read the Quran you see the promise of Allah in this life and in hereafter for the believers the warnings of the punishment in this life and in hereafter for the disbelievers and the sinners so he gets remembered or reminded like this and of course, you know, definitely when the more we get to learn about the Quran, the more that we would enjoy the Quran. But what if someone says, but I don't know the meaning of what I'm reciting. Should I then not to pray the night prayer? No, still pray the night prayer, but put the effort also to learn the Quran. He says, فَالْقَلْبُ مِنْ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ خَائِفٌ مُقْلِقْ, مقلق. The heart is in the remembrance of death, is having fear and worries. وَلِمَا عَمِرَ مِنَ الْحَسَنَةِ مُشْفِقْ and for the good deeds that the person did, the heart is mushfiq, having the concern, what if it's not accepted? Mushfiq, that it might not be accepted. فَالْإِسْتَغْفَارُ شِعَارُ So therefore that person is his istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness, is his shi'ar, is his entire being is upon istighfar. Not looking at his actions, mashallah, I'm praying the night prayer, but rather he would see himself, if it's not accepted, what's going to be the, the benefit of it? Thinking good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but humbling oneself by making lots of istighfar, and that's one of the things to be done at night, especially before the Fajr Salah. And when the darkness comes, this is the, the joy that he's getting because he's now about to stand in the Salah and to enjoy the Salah. And to think good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most generous, this is the hopes that, uh, that that person would have. So you would find... Many different acts of worship are done by the heart as a result of this. Wallahu waliyu tawfiq. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that supports us to be uh, in the state of obedience to Allah. And the last thing in this basically chapter, he says, Rahimahullah, Balagani an shaykhin min al mutabbidin. He said, It had reached me from some of the shaykh of the mutabbidin, those who was those who were in so much of the worship. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was said to be Malik ibn Dinar or so. And now, can Allah wirdu min al layli yaqumu? That he would have a wird, a portion of the night that he would get up and pray. And this is how the Prophet والسلام, was. This is how the righteous ones, they have a portion of the night and they're consistent in doing it. If they feel in doing more, do more, but not to do less of what they've done or they do in a consistent manner. ففتر, and he will talk about that in the next chapter. فَفَتَرَ عَنْ وِرْدِهِ ذَاتَ لَيْلَ So one night he was not able to do it for one reason or the other. He said, قَالَ فَإِذَا أَنَا بِجَارِيَةٍ وَقَدْ وَقَفَتْ عَلَى رَأْسِي كَأَنَّ وَجَهَ قَمَرٍ And he was sleeping and he saw in his dream that uh, a woman standing by his head and his, her face is like a, the moon. وَبِيَدِهَا رِقٌ وَفِيهِ مَكْتُوبٌ and, and her hands is a, is a sheet and it's written in it. فَقَالَتْ أَيُّهَا الشَّيْخَ أَتَقْرَأْ And she said, oh, you shaykh, you old man, do you read? قُلْتُ uh, نَعَمْ he said, I said, yes. قَالَ تِقْرَأْ مَا فِي هَذَا read, read what's in this. فَأَخَذْتُ فَقَرَأْتُ فَإِذَا فِي He said, he found in it written. أَلْهَتْكَ لَذَّةَ نَوْمَةٍ عَنْ خَيْرِ عَيْشٍ مَعَ الْخَيْرَاتِ فِي غُرَفِ الْجِنَانِ تَعِيشُ مُخَلَّدًا لَا مَوْتَ فيها وتنعم في الجنان مع الحسان تيقظ من منامك إن خيرا من النوم التهجد بالقرآن. He says the 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 joy of a, of a, of one time sleep uh, took you away from the best life with the goodness and with the 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 the, the ones in in the, in the room of the Jannah. Uh, you would leave in Jannah forever, no death in it, and you would enjoy in the Jannah with the beautiful ones. So wake up from your sleep. It's better than to better than sleeping is to make the hajjud with the Quran. He says, فَمَا ذَكَرْتُ هَسَاعَ إِلَّا ذَهَبَ عَنِّي النَّوْمِ. He said that I mentioned this and it, you know, that took away from me my sleep. Uh, we don't take religion from uh, dreams and things like this, but it's something to be mentioned to show also how this is something. One of the means that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can comfort someone, and it's a reminder which is what's mentioned is true. 
uh, and we have to work on ourselves like this to uh, remember the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exert ourselves uh, so many things and, and even among the mutadayneen among those who are uh, be upon the deen they make themselves busy with things that is of no benefit whatsoever uh, look at our masajid and our the arguments and people wasting time and socializing too much and there's nothing wrong with that but uh, he said she said backbiting fitan uh disputes arguments uh, you know in whether it's in our masajid in our households and uh, and the hearts are you know diseases in it and all these types of things uh, what would a person expect then to to purify his heart when it in the time to make salah and ibad we should uh, stay away from what harms us which is the sign of a person being wise whether it's physically or non physical to stay away from what harms our religion and to be busy with what is benefiting and to uh, the acts of worship of Allah are so many but one of which is this ibadah that is the shi'ar and the sign and the slogan if it's correct to say of those who are righteous so whether a person is busy in da'wa in teaching in uh, in whatever that a person is doing of matters of deen right uh, it is a shameful thing to not to have a portion of the night that a person would pray in it. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, when, he, when uh, someone came and he spent the night with him and uh, one of uh, the students or so, uh, and he kept water for him on the side uh, if he needs it. And when he came out at Fajr time and he saw the water, the same thing, and he kind of advised him, how can a student of knowledge doesn't have a share at night to pray? That means he did not use the water, he did not make wudu. Sleeping all night, it's not appropriate for a student of knowledge. So... May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, protect us from the evil within our own selves and, and, and guide us all to do what is right, inshaAllah. We'll stop here, inshaAllah ta'ala, before this next chapter uh, that talks about what happens if a person has a portion of the night that he does, which, of course, what is mentioned, they used to, the early generations of Islam. If they hear something of virtue, and that's as he mentioned, right, it takes us to that state. And it's a beautiful statement, the way he put it together. It's balagh. You read about the virtue of the night prayer. You listen about the virtue of something. It takes you to that place. It takes you to that action. This is what it's the purpose of it. It's not just to say, MashaAllah, sounds, sounds great. I wish I can be like this. And we just live our life wishfully thinking. But rather, it should take us to this. But yes, if we're not able to do the way that they used to do all at once, at least to do something. And we have, again, rak'atain, two rak'ah, right? Something that we should... Uh, not to be deprived and as we know the hadith of the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam if you uh, if you remember that whoever uh, prays with 10 uh, ayat only right and the hadith the hadith of abdullah ibn amr ibn as radiyallahu an that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said man qama bi ashri ayat whoever gets up at night and pray with 10 verses only lam yuktab min al-ghafilin he's not going to be written from the ghafilin from those who are forgetful Ten verses. I mean, you already got the ten verses. And whoever stand up at night with hundred verses, he will be written from the qanitin, from the devoted ones. And whoever prays at night with a thousand ayah, he will be written from the muqantirin, muqantirin, those who surpassed everyone. So there are always room for everyone and for every level of zeal. So the least is that we should not deprive ourselves from even being among the least. It's better than than nothing. Uh, and we talk about also some of the means to achieve this, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us benefit from that and I'll stop here, inshallah. And it's already time for the next class. So we'll go to the next class, inshallah. And, and if you have questions, we can have it after the next class, inshallah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh. Muhammad wa sallam wa rahmatullah.